Hello, we meet again for chapter 15, Reproduction, Development and Growth in Humans and Animals, Studies for Form 4, KSSM, and chapter 4, Reproduction and Growth for Form 5, KBSM. The content standard for KSSM Form 4 is on 15.2, Gametogenesis in Humans. The learning standards are 15.2.2, Describe the formation of oogenesis. 15.2.3 Identify the structure of sperm and graphene follicle. 15.2.4 Compare and contrast spermatogenesis and oogenesis. For KBSM Form 5, the learning objective is 4.1 Analyzing gamete formation. The learning outcome, the first one, Describe the formation of ovum in humans. The second one, compare the formation of sperm with ovum. Oogenesis. Oogenesis is the formation of ovum. Where does it take place? It takes place in the ovaries of the female. Female fetus. Even before the fetus were born. Now, we look at the sequence of event. Okay, this one before birth. Okay, before the fetus, the female fetus were born. It started with primordial germ cell or in Form 5 textbook, it is called as germinal epithelial cell. This primordial germ cell or germinal epithelial cell will undergo mitosis multiple times to form diploid oogonium. Oogonium is singular. The plural is called as oogonia. So this oogonium will grow, will develop to form primary oocyte. The primary oocyte is then surrounded by a layer of follicle cell. Outside are the layer of the follicle cell. Inside is the Primary oocyte. This whole structure is called as primary follicle. The growth of the follicle cell that is outside is stimulated by the follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. The primary oocyte then undergo meiosis but the process stops at phase 1 during the Fetal development. When the baby girl was born, the baby girl has already millions of primary follicles that remain dormant, meaning it doesn't do anything, it stays there in for phase one, meiosis one, waiting for the girl to go puberty. When the girl reaches puberty, the primary oocyte will continue meiosis 1 to form secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Remember, this is meiosis process, so that is why the secondary oocyte is haploid and the first polar body is also haploid. The secondary oocyte will continue with meiosis 2 to form two second polar bodies. Now we look closely at the secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte is also surrounded by the follicles. This secondary follicle will grow to form graphene follicle. This is known, the structure is known as graphene follicle. This graphene follicle will help to release one type of hormone in the girl that is estrogen. A mature graphene follicle will then approach the surface of the ovary and merge with the wall of the ovary to release the secondary oocyte. Remember, secondary oocyte just now was inside the graphene follicle. The release of secondary oocyte from the ovary is known as ovulation. The secondary oocyte 
will then complete meiosis too once the sperm is able to penetrate it. This is called as fertilization. This meiosis too will produce ovum and one polar body. Both are haploids. Uh, remember, fertilization is when the sperm nucleus fuses with the ovum nucleus to produce a diploid zygote. Because sperm is haploid, ovum is haploid, so you will get a diploid zygote to end. And this polar body will die and will be disintegrated by the ovary. As for the graphene follicle just now, once the secondary oocyte is released, the remaining of the follicle will form what we call as corpus luteum that is yellowish in color. Now, if fertilization happens, the corpus luteum will continue to grow and will secrete hormone estrogen and hormone progesterone to help in the pregnancy process. But if there is no fertilization, corpus luteum just now and the secondary oocyte will degenerate and die. And it will remove from the body through menstruation. The ovulation takes place from one of the ovaries. Remember, the girls have two ovaries. So each month, the ovulation will take place in one of the ovary alternately. Okay, once in every 28 days. So the two ovary will take turn to produce the ovum. This picture right, so show the process of oogenesis in the ovary. It started with the primary follicle just now and then developed into secondary follicle, graphene follicle and then this is the ovulation process where the secondary oocyte is released released into the fallopian tube waiting for the sperm to undergo fertilization process and then the remaining of graphene follicle will become corpus luteum and whether it grow or not it depends on whether fertilization take place or not Now, we look at the structure of a sperm. The sperm has three main parts. That is the head, the mid base, and the tail. So the head contains nucleus. The mid base is packed. There are a lot of mitochondria. What is the function of mitochondria? To generate energy for the sperm to swim in the fallopian tube to help in the fertilization process. Now, we look at the structure of graphene follicle. Inside that is the green in color is the secondary oocyte. So, secondary oocyte is a large cell and it is surrounded by a gel-like structure that are orange in color that is called as follicle cell. The secondary oocyte together with the follicle cell form what we call as graphene follicle. Now, we look at the comparison between the process of spermatogenesis and oogenesis. First, we look at the similarities. The first similarity, both processes there are gametogenesis and oogenesis take place in reproductive organ. In short, both processes of gametogenesis take place in the reproductive organ. And both processes will produce gametes that are haploid, which will involve in the process of fertilization. Now, we look at the differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. The first difference for the spermatogenesis, 
it take place in the testes. As for the oogenesis, it take place in the ovary. This is spermatogenesis, this is oogenesis. The second difference, for spermatogenesis, the spermatogonium will produce four sperm after the process of meiosis. Whereas in oogenesis, the oogonium will produce only one functional secondary oocyte and the other three non-functioning polar bodies after the meiosis, which with the polar body will later disintegrate. The third difference in spermatogenesis, sperm are smaller and made up of mid-piece, head and tail. Whereas in oogenesis, the secondary oocyte are large and it is spherical in shape. The fourth uh, difference is in spermatogenesis, after meiosis 1, two secondary spermatocytes are produced. In oogenesis, after meiosis 1, only one secondary oocyte and one polar body is produced. The next difference in spermatogenesis, meiosis is completed. Whereas in oogenesis, meiosis 2 is only completed if the sperm is able to fertilize the secondary oocyte. The next difference, spermatid will undergo the process of differentiation to become the sperm. Whereas in oogenesis, secondary oocyte does not undergo differentiation. That is why you only have the spherical, uh, spherical shape in the secondary oocyte. The next difference for spermatogenesis, the production of sperm is continuous, start from the puberty until old age. Whereas in oogenesis, the production of secondary oocyte is not continuous. It starts in the female fetus and it remains dormant. They stay there when the baby was born. The process is then continued once the female reach puberty and it will stop when the female reach menopause. And the last difference, there are millions of sperm form every day. But for oogenesis, only one secondary oocyte is released from the ovary at every menstrual cycle. We have come to the end of today's lesson that is on oogenesis. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel by clicking the button subscribe below. You want to test your understanding on this topic? You can click on the link that I give in the more info section below. See you in the next video. Bye!